Uh, Jimmy did stated that he'll be running a little bit behind. Um, he might be logging in in the meantime. Okay, so um, I'd like to call this meeting to order. Um, he goes, I'd like to call this meeting order for the FY22 budget meeting of mayor and city council. Uh, this is a virtual meeting for Tuesday, April 11 at 7 p.m. So call to order, uh, Valerie Woodall. I'm here. Uh, Jerry Stolfes. Jerry, I see you, but I cannot hear you. Oh, sorry, I was muted. I'm here. Sorry about that. Okay, and I don't see Luke yet. Uh, so let me know once he comes in, okay? Um, and Jimmy did say he was gonna run a little bit behind, like I mentioned, all right? So seeing that there's three of us, this meeting has been called to order at 7.04 p.m. Um, item number two, uh, please note Luke is here as well. Uh, item number two, review of the agenda. Uh, Jared, can you please go ahead and read the agenda as proposed? And I am gonna be adding one item. Jared, if you're speaking, you're muted. Sorry. Um, and Melissa, can you scroll up a little bit? Yep. It's the agenda of the proposed FY 2024 budget meeting of the Mayor City Council, City of Mount Rainier virtual meeting, Tuesday, April 11th, 2023, 7 p.m. Um, items for discussion. Number one, call to order. <clears throat> number two, review of the agenda. Number three, discussion on proposed fiscal year 2024 budget. Number four, reading of ordinance number 5-2023, an ordinance establishing the tax rate, adopting the annual budget, and appropriating funds for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2024, and number five, adjournment. Thank you guys so Thank much. You. The item that I'm gonna request to be added is the emergency ordinance for the rent stabilization. As we discussed mm -hmm. as last week, um, we um, the county council has passed rent stabilization as an emergency ordinance, and we would like to fall under until next year for FY 20, um, January 24. Um, so we'll be adding it as a second reading adoption ordinance, all dash 2023, amending ordinance, don't move it, Melissa, um, amending ordinance 1022 to refer to effect the date of uh, they're up until January 1st, 2024, and declaring the council intent to be bound by the terms of pre-Georges County CB07-2023 through December 31st, 2023. Um, can I have a motion to add that item to the agenda? So moved. Seconded. It will probably moved and second. Any discussion? Abstentions, objections, here none. And this item is going to be the no new number five. And as you can see, you can see it on the screen. All right. All right. Thank you guys so much. All right. Um, and I went ahead and read the item. So can I have a, um, are we all good with the agenda as presented, everyone? So Valerie, we're good? Yep, I'm good. Thank you. Jared? Unmute. I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> we are good. And Luke? Good. Okay, good. Um, alert me once you see Jimmy on it, please, uh, Jared, if, or any of you guys, so that way I could call upon him in case, okay? Absolutely, Mayor. All right, perfect. Thank you so much. All right, so we have a working agenda for the budget discussion for FY24. All right. So moving on to item number three, this discussion on proposed fiscal year 2024 budget. The mayor and council will have a discussion of proposed FY24 budget. Um, for those that have been following, um, this is part of the meetings that have been placed in the calendar since December of last year. Um, and they've been announced repeatedly. So we've had um, the public hearing two Saturdays ago. And we we came back from recess last Tuesday um, and we finalized the, the full discussion of uh, the hearing and the work session from the budget. So we are um, on time. And today it's an 
it's a budget um, discussion on its own, right? Um, we have been um, putting this to the budget calendar for years. So this is like way beyond, at least we could tell you for the last seven years, it's been a budget calendar, even before uh, Luke and I joined the council, just to let uh, residents um, be aware when the budget will be discussed. So tonight will be like the first read through. We did went line item by line item on that Saturday, asking questions of our directors. There's some information that's gonna be um, sent back to us. But at this point, uh, we'll go ahead and read some of the changes that we made from that read through um, that we had and what the line item is so that we're all in the same page. You guys could find the budget on the city of Rainier um, webpage. Uh, correct, Melissa? Yes, ma'am. And you know under what tab, Melissa, is under finance, or is it on the main page? It's on the finance. So under finance, you can find the budget um, information so that way you could follow us with, with us. So at this point, we'll discuss some of the changes that we have made from the original um, budget that was given to us. So the last version was on 325, and thank you for that. And this is like the added items to the budget. Uh, this is version um, April 6, 2023. And if anything is moved on, we'll go ahead and list the version so that way residents know which version we are looking at, okay? Um, by the time of this budget process, once we vote, um, the staff will put this in a very nice document and it's gonna be put it under our website. And um, obviously if you guys want hard copies, you are welcome to um, obtain them at City Hall and Council will each get their own um, hard copy of this document as well. All right, so without any further ado, we have in front of us the city of Miami FYT4 budget changes. I said it is a new budget version from April 6, 2023. And these are items that um, mayor and council collectively um, have worked on um, and created some of the changes and we basically all moved together in consensus. Um, until the budget is approved, basically we move on consensus um, and agreement that that's what we want until like we officially vote on it. So today's just a read through, no vote is taking place when it comes to the budget, just to clarify everything. Um, Luke, did I miss anything regarding the, just the overview of the budget, nothing in detail yet? No, I think that's right. All right, perfect. So um, I'm gonna move the floor to our Financial consultant Ron Wilson for him to do the read through so that way I could save a little bit of my voice. All right, so Ron, can you please uh, make sure you read the item, the line, what it is, uh, what the previous amount, the new amount, and the change as you have listed here in the department. Um, so thank you guys so much. Go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Uh, in the revenue section for line item 4100 real estate taxes, we originally uh, budgeted 5116728 Our new budgeted amount is 5075428 That's a reduction of 41300 and that's to reflect the one cent reduction in the tax rate for single family homes and townhouses. Line item 4214, rent stabilization. Um, we originally budgeted 135,625. We are now budgeting 67,812 and 50 cents, a reduction of $67,812 and 50 cents. And that's to reflect that the rent stabilization will go into effect midway during the year. Line item 4698, ARPA revenue. We originally budgeted $3,500,000. We are now budgeting $3,599,500, an increase of $99,500. Uh, that's to reflect the movement of uh, certain expense items out of the operating budget and to the ARPA um, uh, grant that we have. The net revenue change is a reduction of $9,612.50. In the expense section, 5103 medical insurance. This is across all the departments. We originally budgeted $732,291.98. 
We're now budgeting $853,213.44, an increase of $120,921.46. This is to reflect the new rates that we received from legit for, um, for our health insurance for the upcoming year. Line item 5102, dental insurance, again, across all departments. Uh, we originally budgeted $25,620.65. We're now budgeting $29,567.52, an increase of $3,946.87. Again, this reflects the new rates from legit for the dental insurance. Line item 5107, retirement contribution for the mayor and council department. We originally budgeted 1,040. We're now budgeting zero, um, a reduction of 1,040. This is to reflect that none of the current council members are participating in the retirement program. Line item 5505, city sponsored meetings uh, for the mayor and council department. We originally budgeted 5,500. We're now budgeting 2,500, a reduction of $3,000. And this was at the request of council. Line item 5529, Mayor and Council Retreat. This is in the Mayor and Council Department. Originally budgeted 3,000. We're now budgeting zero, a reduction of $3,000. Uh, and this is due to uh, the council um, accelerating the date for their retreat into the current fiscal year. Uh, so we will not have the expense for next fiscal year. Line item 5411, employee training for city hall department. We originally budgeted 16,000. We're now budgeting 6,000, a reduction of 10,000. And this was uh, at the direction of uh, council for the city manager to find $10,000 in savings across several different uh, expense items. And his um, uh, best uh, approach to that was to take it from the city hall employee training. Line item 5597, ARPA expense. This is also the city hall department. We originally budgeted 3,500,000. We now budget $3,599,500, an increase of $99,500. And this is the um, re-budgeting um, uh, of certain operating expenses into uh, ARPA. The next line item is 5534, Juneteenth, in the Ad Administrative Services Department. We originally had no budget for that line item. We're now budgeting 1,000 for an increase of 1,000, and this is at the direction of council. Line item 5545, scholarship programs, uh, administrative services department. We originally budgeted 2,000. We're now budgeting 1,000, a reduction of 1,000. This was at the request of council. Line item 5547, CERT team, Administrative Services Department. Originally, we budgeted 4,000. We're now budgeting 3,000 for a reduction of 1,000, again, at the direction of council. Line item 5555, Arts Council. We originally budgeted 19,000. We're now budgeting 15,000 for a reduction of 4,000. And this is at the direction of council. Line item 5648, Police Advisory Board, Administrative Services Department. We originally had no budget for this line item. We're now budgeting 3,000, and this was at the direction of council. Line item 5649, Rent Stabilization Board, Administrative Services Department. We originally budgeted zero. We're now budgeting 1,000 for an increase of 1,000 and that was at the direction of council. Next uh, line item, salaries. Um, for the police department, we originally budgeted 1,272,972.15, 1,272,972.15, we're now budgeting 
We're now budgeting $1,254,836.50, a decrease of $18,135.65. And this is due to the taking out of the uh, 3% COLA for the members of the FOP who are under the CBA. Ron, sorry, Mayor, yes. may, may I have the floor for a second there, just to, so okay. residents. Hold on. So, Ron, how many more lines do you need? Is it just this one, the, the 50,000 one, and that's it? The no, there's, there's another partial page. Okay, do me a favor. So, Luke, do you want to talk about the whole entire thing right here? No, no, no. I just, I just want to have a point of clarification for the public. Okay. So, we are not cutting police salaries by 3%. We are actually raising police salaries in the FOP by 12%. Um, that CBA agreement raised their salaries by 12%. It includes a signing bonus as well, a substantial amount. So because they got that 12% increase in the signing bonus, they don't get the COLA this year. So I just want to clarify that for people. The police FOP is getting a substantial raise. Um, it's just not reflecting in the COLA. It's reflected in their collective bargaining agreement that was just signed. So. That's why this, so this looks like you're, we're cutting money. We are not, just want to be clear for everybody. Thank you, Ron. Do me a favor, make a note of it that where this section is at, you put that information on it. So that way when the residents read it and they're not here tonight, it is it, it is placed there. Okay, Luke, um, if you can work with Ron to put the paragraph together, that will help. That way it hits the points that you just talked or Ron literally just hear what, Ron, what Luke said and added to that because it does make a big difference in in what it what it really is because this looks like three percent off. You're hundred percent correct, Luke. Um, and now that twelve percent that has been increased to it. Okay. Sure will. All right. Thank you. Uh, um, anything else, Luke? Or that covers everything. Luke. Good. All right. He, go, go ahead, Ron. Okay. Line item five thousand and three shift differential. This is for the night shift uh, police department. We originally budgeted 414,452.85. We're now budgeting 404, 687.50, a reduction of 9,765.35, again, because of the, um, uh, the COLA. Line item 5100, FICA, that's Social Security and Medicare for the police department. We originally budgeted 137,000. $885.51. We're now budgeting $135,751.09, a reduction of $2,134.42, again, because of the COLA. Uh, line item 5105, Workers' Comp, Police Department. Uh, we originally budgeted $304,922.66. We're now budgeting $300,202.55, a reduction of 4720.11, again due to the COLA. Uh, 5107, retirement contribution uh, for the police department. We originally budgeted $197,185.30. We're now budgeting $194,132.93 a reduction of $3,052.37, again, because of the COLA. And just uh, so that everybody uh, understands, FICA, workers' comp, and the retirement contribution are a function of salaries. So when the salaries go down, the uh, those expenses go down. Conversely, when salaries go up, those expenses go up. Line item 5202 for the police department is computer supplies and expense, $55,000. Uh, this is for new tough book computers for patrol cars. We are moving that expense to ARPA. Line item 5205 uniforms for the police department. This is for um, new officers that will be re we will be recruiting. $36,500 was the original budget. We're zeroing that out and moving that over to ARPA. 5,300 vehicle repair and maintenance for the police department. We originally budgeted 35,000. We're now budgeting 30,000 for a reduction of 5,000. 
and that's to reflect the uh, replacement of older vehicles with newer vehicles, and we're expecting that the uh, repair and maintenance expense would go down. Line item 5542, bike co-op expense. Um, for public works, we originally budgeted 8,000. We are now moving that to ARPA. So that's an $8,000 reduction in that line item in the operating budget. Line item 5611, street lights and signals. Uh, for public works, we originally budgeted 90,000. We're now budgeting 85,000 for a reduction of 5,000. Line item 5700, capital projects. For public works, we originally budgeted $200,000 for um, street repairs. We're now budgeting $131,000 for a reduction of $69,000. And then finally, line item 5598, contingency. Uh, this is in the other department. We originally budgeted $56,278.96. We're now budgeting $56,646.03 for an increase of $367.07. All of the expense changes uh, net to a reduction in expenses of $9,612.50, which is the exact same amount as the reduction in the revenue. So the impact on the surplus or deficit is a net zero. Okay, thank you so much, Ron. Uh, this is the final page, correct? Yes. There, there are some footnotes here that have to do with um, some non-budget items, just uh, some labeling and some things like that. I don't know that that requires a reading. Um, it doesn't, but, but for the next uh, budget, we need to have not just this as a summary of what's being changed, but the actual budget itself that reflects the change. Okay. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, I didn't understand that. I said for the next budget that we have, like the physical budget, we need not just a summary, but the, those numbers being changed on the budget itself. Yeah, everything on this summary is reflected in your updated budget. In, including the the footnoted items. Thank you so much. I want to make sure that's clear. I do okay. have a I do see a question on it. It says, Fermina Young, with the salaries are going up by twelve percent as part of the collective bargaining agreement, what is the actual cost of salaries? They can work with Prince Combs. First department won this slide items ultimately see an increase. Uh, Nina, uh, originally the Ron, correct me if I'm wrong, and you could add more detail on it, but the percentage was already part of the budget when it was originally presented out. So the team already like forecasted it on it in case um, it went through. So that way we will, we will deduct it if need to be any changes, but it was already there. Correct, Ron? That is correct. The original budget that was presented on March 25th included our projection of the increases due to the new collective bargaining agreement plus a 3% COLA. Um, so it was actually uh, got a 15% increase uh, that would have happened by uh, July 1st. Um, and we uh, are taking out the 3% COLA. Yeah, so that's the reason why you see um, that it shows decrease on it because they already put it there. Um, very wisely um, projecting ahead. So that way um, it allowed for them to, it'll be easier to take it out and actually find the money after the fact. So that's the reason why they did it. All right, thank you, Nina. Uh, Danielle, um, so the CVS included the removal of their COLA. It's, essential. Um, it's just for this year, Danielle, not for any future years. It was just part of uh, the, the agreement for this year, okay? All right, so also you have in front of you some of the edits that we make. There is uh, one or two that I need to make, um, starting with um, 5648. The police advisory board has $3,000. The rental board only has 1000 
I honestly feel like it should be the opposite, mainly because the police advisory board is, um, they have no function except for like reviewing the documents from the police while the rest of the board will have a lot more functions, including reviewing information from, um, from the apartment owners, from the landlords, as well as putting documentation out that including mailers and everything else um, as part of like um, the things that the person needs to do uh, as in conjunction with them. So I would request if we could swap those or put 2,000 each, um, that will work. But yeah, the resolution board will be, um, will take a little bit more than other, okay? So that'll be my proposal for you guys. So either um, sweep the amount from 48 to 49, so we still had a balance or just switch it to 1,000, 1,000 for the police advisory board and uh, 3, 000, the 3,000 for rent civilization, okay? Uh, the other one, I know emailed you guys, and uh, thank you for not replying all. Um, I had re I had asked for information to be submitted to us when it came to an additional 2% of COLA increase for employees that were earning less than 50000 Um Luke, was this four years ago? Four or five years ago, we went ahead and do something similar for staff that was earning under certain amounts. So this is the second time we have um, done something similar where people that earn the least amount in the city receive um, a, little, a little bit more in order to balance it out just a bit more between the staff because the gaps are a little bit bigger. But um, Ron, what was the amount you said it was 8,000 what? Um, uh, give me one second. 8,200, Ron. 8,200? 80, yeah. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Kamal. I know you're under the weather, so I'm trying to make sure you don't talk as much, okay? But um, I'm fine calling on you, okay? Thank you, Mayor. Okay, so uh, those are my proposals, and I need to know where you guys are at, at least with those two. Um, my original suggestion was for us to look into contingency money to we, we could withdraw those um, $8,000 in order to make it a smooth transition in and out. Um, but you guys could suggest as, as you choose. I know um, at least more than one of you did say that um, you guys were supported, you know, without copying everybody. Okay, so uh, Council, I'm going to open it up um, first to hear when it comes to the additional 2% um, for the staff and then the other one between the police advisory board and the rent civilization board. Okay, so we'll do it separately. Um, the floor is to you guys, so I'm going to call on, let me see, since I have, did Jimmy made it yet? No. All right, so I'm going to go with word, um, Luke, go ahead. Okay, thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you, by the way. Thank so, you, Jimmy. Um, I think that for um, the Police Advisory Board and the Rent Stabilization Board, I think giving them both $2,000 and then to the extent they need more funding, we can always revisit it mid-year. Um, just so that uh, people who are thinking of serving on the rent stabilization board or people who are on the police advisory board, um, we've never had a problem uh, when boards, you know, reasonably hit their cap and need a little bit more extra funding of making sure they have the funding they need. Um, so I wouldn't worry about that. So I think two and two makes good sense. Um, I would just generally note that I think the mayor and council were hoping that during this meeting we could explore um, COLAs for all staff um, uh, that are more than the 3% that the city manager submitted in his budget. Um, while we are very supportive of the 3% that the city manager uh, submitted in the budget, um, I think we all understand that inflation is hurting everybody. Um, and um, we had hoped to kind of have a longer discussion about 4%, 5%, what, what, what could we do for the rest of staff? Um, unfortunately, that first expense item there, 51 three medical insurance um, is new. That jump of $120,000 is new that happened between our last meeting and this meeting. Um, and that really ties our hands um, because that's just like a big hit to come all of a sudden from legit. Um, no one's to blame. That's nobody's fault. Um, that's just sort of happened. Um, and we have to deal with that and manage with that. Um, that takes some of the you know tools away from us because we had a lot of discussion around all our line items in a budget to try to get to a budget that we could live with and that was good. 
Um, and so to undo all that now to find colas is really, really difficult um, to do. Um, in this budget, I think it's a really good document. We have $900,000 devoted to our streets and sidewalks. It's the most I think we've, we've ever had. Um, and that's a reflection of the very important street and sidewalk study that we're doing right now. Um, and the fact that we'll need funding for that. Um, and so, um, but I think, but I support the 5% for, for those um, under making under $50,000. That's not without precedent. We have done that before, as the mayor said. Um, so that's my thoughts um, there and I'll stop talking. Mayor, can I offer uh, maybe a, a, a way to, to, to think about this? Would that be appropriate so at this time? First, first, let's go through the concept to see if okay. this is what they would like to do before we do the second part, because if sure. not, you will have done that. If, you know, I will hear them. I don't want to put words into their mouth. And then we'll move okay. to the next step, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Jimmy, you're next. Or do you want me to skip you at the end? Well, I, I would defer it. I'd like to hear what Bond says before I speak. So, I mean, other people, but curious what his idea is. Ron, are you talking about where to get the money from? Is that where you're going to talk about something different? Mayor, we have a suggestion for council. And if you allow, Ron can explain it. Hold on. So, guys, it's just, he's going to suggest where to take it out, but it's up to you guys if you want to hear him now. But if we're not in agreement, he'll give you the big explanation with no, um, with nothing with us to do. I'd, I'd love to hear what he has to say. That may change my remarks just now. Thanks. <laughs> Okay, go ahead. Oh, okay. Likewise. So um, I, I was re reviewing all the budget line items to see where we might be able to, to get the funds for the additional 2% of COLA. Um, to put it in perspective, the, the additional 2% of COLA for everybody other than the FOP would, uh, would cost us uh, $41,250. Um, I fill upon the, um, the debt service, not, not for the bonds, but for the various capital leases that we have. And we, we have the ability to accelerate, uh, some of that expense into fiscal 23. And we have plenty of room in fiscal 23 to, to handle that cost. And if we did that, we could free up uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 or $60,000 out of fiscal 24's budget. And that would uh, provide the funds to pay for the additional 2% COLA. And also keep in mind that going forward into future years, um, all of these uh, capital leases that we have on the books will will be done. There won't be any more capital lease expense for fiscal 25 and forward uh, unless we make the decision to take out some new leases. Right now, we're operating under the assumption that we're going to pay for equipment out of cash. So that, that, that was my, my offer of information. Um, maybe not in this meeting room, but definitely maybe for the work session, I would like for us to add, um, how are we proposing to raise, um, back the $2 million that we, uh, took out on a loan. Um, definitely that'd be very smart, um, to figure out what the future plan is for us since we took $2,000 loan, not just to take out the fee, but also make sure that we are able to recuperate those funds back into our reserve account so that we have more opportunity for a rainy day. Um, so to me, it's a two tier thing. So can we make sure we add it for the next work session? Sure. So we'll have a longer discussion. Okay. Yeah. But just to clarify, I'm not talking about taking out any new loans. All, all I'm talking about is, is in for some of them, instead of paying them in fiscal 24, we pay them in fiscal 23. There's no, uh, net increase in cost. We're just shifting it to a different year. Uh, and we have the room and the budget to do it for this year for fiscal 23. Um, 
and thereby we can take it out of the fiscal 24 budget. Uh, yeah, Ron, I wasn't thinking of a new loan. I was thinking okay. of one, yes, saying that $2 million that we took it, currently took out of the bank. And two, those $2 million, um, what is the plan to replenish um, our coffers, uh, you know, for lack of a better word, when it comes to um, the city? Because that's $2 million that were invested into a project, right? In this case, Paul's Hall, right? But those $2 million are gone. So I'm making sure that we have a plan when it comes to a rainy day fund and what it looks like for the short and long term as well. Okay. All right. Okay. Perfect. Um, so let me go to council and figure out what is it that they, they, they you know, that. So at this point, we talked about the police advisory board rent stabilization, and the next one was like the COLA. Um, I will address those two, and then if you guys want to open it to, um, to a different discussion, that's fine. But usually, um, when we put two things in the table, we stick to those two. You guys can open a third one. That's okay as well. All right. So, Jimmy, you're, you were next on the deck. You said you wanted to hear what Ron had to say, so go ahead. Uh, I don't have anything to say right now. I'm just listening. Sorry, do you, you cut off? Hi, I'm sorry. I just don't have anything to say right now. I'm kind of listening to what other people are saying. Okay, perfect. I'll come back to you. Uh, Jared Valerie. Yeah, so um, I think first on the, sorry, for, sorry, three things. There's the rent uh, stabilization committee, the um, police advisory board committee. Um, I, you know, I, I, I guess a little, it's, you know, rest stabilization committee is new, the police committee is new. I, I you know, I, I think I'd, I, I guess with Luke's approach of 2K and 2K, but that probably makes sense. And we can just reallocate around if, um, if needed. I, I, I honestly, I don't think I have a strong opinion on this one. I do, given that I don't know exactly where um, costs might be generated for this new committee. Um, and then, uh, sorry, can you? Here, my apologies. Uh, last... It might just be me, but you're cutting off. Um, can anybody hear clearly? I can hear you. Can you? Can you all hear me? I can hear you. Okay, it Selena, might be, you might be. Go ahead. Yeah, it might be your connection. Um, and, and sorry, the last item that we're talking about. Sorry, can we clarify? It's Ron's. The, the point that Ron made or what am I what am I reflecting on? It's the two percent cola. Yeah. It was the two percent um, cola for okay. the staff that earn under fifty thousand. It's like eight thousand yeah. something. Uh that was part of the question I had addressed. Yeah, I'm um I think I'm generally I'm generally supportive of that. I, I, I the thing I'm, uh, you know, just obviously trying to be want to be mindful of, um, you know, our overall budget. I, you know, want to reflect on uh, the fact that inflation has caused a tremendous, tremendous drives up in in costs. Um, you know, for an expense that's that those costs obviously get passed along to our. Um, um, folks that are, you know, salary earners. Um, I, you know, I, I, I don't know that the, you know, and if you're at the lower end of the spectrum, it's, uh, it is challenging. Um, you know, the percentage increases doesn't often hit you as strongly as someone else. So, I mean, I'm directionally supportive um, of, of the idea, um, you know, given, given how, Inflation has been going up and costs have been increasing. And uh, this helps, especially for our lowest earning staff, kind of ameliorate some of that. So uh, that's my two cents right now. Thank you. Thank you so much. And, and I apologize if, if I, I, I'll type it in if I can hear that's, you guys, uh, so that we know whether it's one or the other. Okay. Uh, so, looks, Valerie, like uh, uh, you're next. Yes. And Jimmy, your mic is open. Yeah. Hey, um, yeah, thank you. Um, so I think the 
I'm sorry, the police advisory board and stabilization, I, I, I think it's fine to either flip them or to equalize them. So they're both at 2000. I think that's fine either way. Um, um, for the colas, I'm definitely supportive of that idea and that proposal. Um, I like, I mean, Ron's idea potentially. Um, I'd like to see more and learn more about that, but I do think I'm supportive of that. Um, and I'm also supportive of taking that out of contingency if we have to. So thank you. Okay, thank you, Jimmy. We're going, it's your turn again. Go ahead. Uh, I mean, I like uh, Ron's suggestion, uh, you know, I mean, we'll have to deal with uh, budget issues next year, but if there's a way to resolve this this year by moving the budget this fiscal year, uh, that makes sense to me. So I kind of am supportive of that. The other okay, issue so was the committees, the, the other okay. issue with the committees or what was the other issue? The other yeah. one was to either flip from the police advisory to a thousand rent decision to three thousand or give it two and two. Well, you know, uh, being the liaison to the uh, police advisory board, <laughs> I feel I, I think you know, in some ways, the rent stabilization thing is a, is an unknown number. And I don't mind leaving it at one because it might be m more in involved. We're not even sure what it's going to be involved yet. Uh, I have a sense of what the kind of the training they're going to do. So I, I guess the the rent advisory board and what kind of training is almost like a question mark, and it may be more than one thousand dollars, two thousand dollars. So I don't mind leaving it at one thousand because I think you know the council will have to revisit exactly you know you know what are they going to need. I mean, is it going to be some kind of a way to analyze you know you know what are some of the, what are some of the exceptions, you know, like, you know, a market rate and things like that. And how, you know, we're going to have people, you know, citizens who really won't know that stuff. So I'm not sure a thousand dollars would do it a 2000. So I think it's like something I'm not, I'm not concerned about leaving it only a thousand dollars because I think we'll have to reach address it later. I'm not sure 2000 would do it either. So I, I, I lean to 3000, 1000, but um, uh, but that's, that's where I would be leaning, but uh, it's not a strong opinion of mine. So Jimmy, you're, you're leaning police advisory stay at three and one. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, that's what I'm leaning at. I don't feel strongly about it just because I think the one, the, 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 the rent thing isn't until January and we don't even have a, we don't have a sense of what kind of training that's going to involve. Yes, three and so one. I will tell you guys, based on the orange for the police advisory, the police advisory basically meets, talks to the chief, talks to the city manager, and makes recommendations to the um, to the mayor and council. That's their whole entire. That's what I'm trying to figure out. Why is the three thousand dollars for? That's the reason why I was like symbolically we could go well. We well, I mean, I mean. Two. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. I mean, they haven't prepared a budget. It might be kind of training on police issues and how to deal with community policing. I mean, two and two is fine. It's, you know, the, they haven't really submitted a budget. So exactly what it, what it entails. So, I mean, it's hard for me to argue that 2000 doesn't do it, you know, so. So can we look at two and two? The only reason why is because I feel that police advisory board might have more room for us to be able to get funds from public safety sure. okay that's the only reason why i mean because they're directly deal with it it might be a possibility for us to get funds somewhere else mm -hmm. where the rental station board you mm -hmm. know two two will even it out um okay so regarding the other one i'm um i'm hearing a little bit of everything how about i propose this until we get more information can we at the minimum do the extra two percent for the under 50 as we get more information, if you guys need to for the rest. Luke, go ahead. Um, I, I'd just like to ask a, more, a few more questions of Ron, if that's okay. Um, that, that's fine, but I'll tell I can you wait. My, my, the only reason I want to say my way out, at least, it lets us to give him 
he could send us more information if these people ask a bunch of questions and he might have them here or you could wait for him to like email us all to get him. It's up to you. You could ask them, but it also gives you time to do step one. And then if we need to do step two, then we do step two. But yeah, look, yeah th I think I'd rather have the conversation now. Thanks. Um, Ron, on the, um, the moving the, the lease payments forward, um, that's for, is most of that for public works equipment and police cars, or is it just public works equipment? Uh, it, there's public works, police, and code. Gotcha. Um, when you say in future years, we would look to pay for that out of cash, what makes me nervous is if we, like, where would the room come in the budget? Well, it, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm talking about new purchases. Um, yeah. we, we have tried to do them out of cash as a, for instance, uh, the three police vehicles that were added this year yeah. were, were done with, with the budget amendment and, and the uh, plan was to pay all cash. Okay. We also budgeted them for two uh, new vehicles next year, That's all right. in cash. Okay. Um, uh, we, we don't know yet. Uh, about code or public works, what their yeah. needs will be. Uh, but we will uh, work with them to spread those purchases out um, to the best of the, our ability. Um, knowing that at some point, um, both of those departments uh, will need some, some new equipment. Um, and also the police department, uh, the plan is for them to add um, uh, two or three new vehicles every year uh, on an ongoing basis. Yeah, and moving that to electric purchase, electric vehicle purchases, I think, mm -hmm. um, which would which might be more expensive. Or that price may come down with all the Inflation Reduction Act incentives. Um, okay, so if I look into, so I'm going to think out loud here a little bit. So this budget already has money allocated for police car purchases. So correct. Moving moving lease costs forward into FY24 should not impact our ability to in future years purchase police cars because that's already a line item that we're not removing from the budget. So that will be there and we should have that money and that should be correct. Should be okay. What yes. might it's the public works and code vehicles that are a little bit more of a question mark and you would have to find that room in the budget. Yeah, we'd have to evaluate that as the need arises mm -hmm. um, and also work with the directors of those departments to be a little more forward looking and, and yeah. have a plan for um, equipment rotation uh, over the long haul. Um, yeah. You know, rather than coming to us and saying, oh, we need three new vehicles this year. Yeah. Right. When, yeah. when we'd rather do one uh, a year for three years. Yeah. Yeah. If, if that's doable. Yeah. So and, uh, yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I I just to clarify, you know, the the what what I'm recommending that we do with, with the lease payments is just accelerate them a little yeah. bit. Uh, you know, get, straddle the fiscal year, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Um, and either way we go, the the impact on any future purchases whether they're done in cash or lease uh, is not affected in any way. Yeah, right. Okay. Um, I'll just speak for me um, uh, from when I think about a COLA, that's usually something that's applicable to all employees. Um, I would be supportive of a 5% rate COLA for, for everyone. Um, and that's just the way I think about inflation. It impacts everybody. I think we have a really high performing team um, across the city, and I'd love to see us be able to um, address that with a with a cola that is applicable to everybody equally. Um, as a federal employee, that's what happens with us. We all get colas equally, um, and I think that's most state agencies as well. As everybody gets that cola, um, I know we've done different things here in the past. I know there's precedent for it, but I would, if we do have the money, I would love to do that um, cola for everybody. Um, so that's where that's where I am. Thanks. Okay. 
Valerie, Jared, Jimmy, whichever of you guys would like the floor, please let me know. Um, yeah, thank you. I, I would generally agree um, if we can make it work. I think it's worth um, investing in employees um, and um, preparing a COLA for them. So thank you. Go ahead, Jared. Sorry. Um, Ron, I guess with that proposal from you and Mr. Kamali, is that, you know, is that a one-time suggestion or is that something that you're proposing in out years? No, it's a, it's a one-time suggestion. Um, uh, except for one lease um, uh, in, in public works, uh, all of these capital leases are going to be done in 24 anyway. I meant the COLA proposal, sorry. Oh, the COLA proposal? Um, well, it, you know, I, I I don't know what the inflation environment is going to be going forward. Um, you know, we, we've we done 3% pretty consistently now for, for several years. Uh, I, yeah, just my personal opinion, I don't think that 5% would be the new standard. Um, However, um, you know, based on uh, what the inflation environment is like over the next year, um, we may want to have a serious discussion about it. Okay. Uh, that's all I have right now. Okay, Jimmy. How many discussions? I mean, let's let's break it up in the different discussions. Can we do so? What are the different? I mean, there's this is one one comprehensive uh, proposal. We talking about? Okay. I mean, I've heard the bring the money over. I've heard the two and two, and I've heard the fifty thousand. Are these all like this is one package? Or are we talking about three different things? Anybody? No. Um, sorry, Jimmy, I didn't quite clear. So I think we were having two, three different, three or four different conversations. I think that's where the confusion lies. So, so I think we basically set up for the police advice, the police and resolution to do two and two. So that was the thing we most okay. of went that way. The other okay. part was um, the proposal for um, based on the information we got, right? And everything else was coming our way. Um, for the original ask was like, we were not going to do anybody, right? Above the 3%. For it to be 2% for those that earn um, under 50,000, which is um, some of the employees do, there's a big gap between those that earn 50 and those that earn more than 50. So that was proposed at once. My proposal once, can we decide at least in the first one? And then we could like, if we need more information and more data, right? We could do the second part of the discussion and do it all at once. It's up to you guys. Um, but I'm, I'll leave you the floor and then I'll have my thoughts on what I think about it. Go ahead. I think we've all mentioned something, May. I think you're the one who, what your opinion on it is. No. I definitely want to make sure I make the statement because it makes it sound like we have not been good employers, which is not the correct thing to say. As Ron mentioned, we have consistently done 3% COLA every year, um, even through COVID, even through everything that went through, it was 3% consistently when COLA has been zero, we have done 3%, when COLA has been 1% for others, we have done 3%, when COLA has been 2%, we've done 3%, so that has not changed. So I don't want people to walk out of the assumption thinking that we have tied um, the COLA to the cost of living because it has and it's just been consistent 3%. Other uh, thing, I definitely want to make sure we point out that this budget does have an increased uh, bonus for all staff. Um, it was at one point 200 to 50, 300, now it's 500 for each of the staff members at the end of the year. So that's also going to be taking place um, and that's every December is given to every single staff member, um, you know, so 
I want to make sure that's up front because I don't want people to walk out of here with the idea that that doesn't get hasn't gotten any colas or any bonus additional bonuses. And also, um, I think it's 10 to 12 half days that the staff um, leave early with pay, um, you know, that we also do, right? So there's other things that we do aside from um, the, the races that we do for staff. Um, saying that originally I wanted to do the 2% for the 50%, uh, 50,000 or less employees because the gap is big. So I wanted to make sure at least compensate them. People are there making you know, uh, 60, 70, 80,000 plus, $100,000 plus are going to be hit differently than those that are making 38, 34, uh, 40,000 um, in our staff. And that's the, and that's the reality. So to, to me, that's the reason why I wanted to advocate yes, 3% for everybody else and not the extra additional 2% for those that are, are under 50 so that we could at least, um, at least we make we make sure that um, we we balance it out a little bit, you know. Um, have we we have done it in the past? We have given addition of um, cola. I see a question it says, uh, has anybody discussed with the attorney whether you can legally provide different colas based on salary? We did it in well, the past. It should be done. Mayor. Yeah, go ahead, Jimmy. Well, one possibility is taking. We're talking about a five percent. Uh, is taking it, making it a flat, you know, 5% of what the kind of 70, let's say, you know, making it 5% of what the average uh, median raise. So if it's like $60,000 and giving everybody, you know, all of those people $3,000. So it helps the people at the lower end more, but still, you know, something. I mean, we've often done that, you know, in, in you know, which, Instead of doing a percentage of it doesn't not everybody's happy about that, but it, it helps you know, you know, do a kind of a more of a flat rate, but above a little bit above the do so the people at the higher level would be less a percent and the people at the lower level would be a higher percent. I mean, I'm also um in other words, if you take you know, take seventy thousand dollars or something, you make five percent of that's thirty five hundred dollars. So for people at the higher level would be a lesser percent than people at the lower level would be a higher percent for the cost the same amount. That I'm open to discuss, Jimmy. Um, but that was my my thinking of it because I do feel that people getting under 50 get hit a lot harder than those making 80 plus and, you know, um, even 70 plus. So one, we wouldn't take away the 3% that the staff was um, expecting. We are increasing 200 plus dollars more bonus. We did increase last year and then we're doing an increase this year. But it seems like to me at this point, we could always have this discussion at work session so we could pull it out of this because it just seems like we're 100% consensus and, and you know, where we're at. Okay, so I do have, uh, so I did address Nina's question. I have Danielle's 5% of 1,000 is a lot more than 5% for those only making 40,000. Yeah, 100%. I, I definitely agree with that. Okay. Um, so council, at this point, I would definitely will, would like for us to move it to a work session. And Jimmy, can you bring, can you put into more specific the proposal that you're making so that we could like discuss that one? Sure. Maybe that's the one we need to do in order to have some qualifying um, okay. information along with it, you okay. know? Okay. All right, perfect. Thank you guys so much. Uh, council, is there anything else? Um, there was one more thing I wanted to bring when it came to the um, to it. Um, I know that on it, I see a withdrawal of um, the mayor and council retirement contributions. Um, I definitely do, wouldn't want to take any money out of there because, like I stated before, um, uh, this year I will be filling out my documents for my retirement and. For whatever X reason, the, a former person decided not to do it. That's not on me. It was on the city because I submitted those papers twice. It's my third time submitting them. But also, we asked the staff to make sure they let us know where mayor and council stand with this. So I'm afraid if we put this at zero, it will become zero for all of us. And I'm not taking that opportunity for myself or anybody else that serves in council. 
you know, a couple of us have served like this is our what six, seven year now. Um, you know, it's quite a bit of time. And um, so um, I will ask for us to leave it there and then revisit to add more to it in order to um, to make up for, um, you know, for us to have it there at least, right? As um, a staff finds more information on what it looks like, but um, I'm finalizing my documents to submit because I will be submitting. I mean, this might, like I say, this is my third time submitting this documents. None of the current staff was there, but after my understanding, you know, um, that was that was taken care of. My name, it was very surprising to find out what. All right, so what are your thoughts on the retirement contribution portion of it, of, of this document? So I'm gonna go Jared, Valerie, uh, Jimmy, Luke. Um, I'm, I mean, I'm, I have no additional comments at this time. All right, Valerie. Um, thank you. I think um, uh, um, I think I mean right now it's, it's adjusted to be zero. Um, I think you know the conversation we've had about different boards and committees that we can always reallocate funds as needed. I think that's something we can think about. I think putting it back to a thousand forty is fine as well. <laughs> it's only a thousand dollars forty. You know, so I think it's hard to have a conversation about colas and then talk about mayor and council funds after that, but um, I do think it's something to think about. And I do recognize that, you know, we're all working here as well. So it makes sense to have some funding in that in that category. So um, I'm fine with putting it back in. Um, I'm also fine with reallocating funds after the fiscal year if we need to. Um, and I think that's where I am. Thank you. All right. Uh, the other thing to point out to people, the three or five percent does not include mayor and council. We do not get any increases or any COLA or anything above. So I want to make sure that's very understood. Um, there is a way we could get increases and that's basically we vote on it. And it's until 2025 when some of us will even see those increases because we cannot vote for our own races. Um, at least that's basically what has been explained to us like for you know, like a century ago when we started in council, right? But so, that's what I want to make sure it is clear. It does the three, five, it does not apply to us. Um, so yeah, so every year we're in console, we definitely get paid a lot less. Um, okay, so Luke, uh, sorry, GB Luke, go ahead. Jimmy. I'm sorry. I was called away. Can you remind me? Would you go over what it was? I'm back. The retirement contribution for mayor and council, um, the staff is supposed to get us information <coughs> on what the work looked like and what we need to submit. I stated that I submitted my paper twice before and as far as I'm concerned, money was being taken out of my check, right? And um, and I was part of it and then I found that it wasn't. But my fear is that if we leave it at zero, we forgot it. And we've asked this, I think every year we basically ask the same question and we never get clear answers. But what I do know is council members have started after me and Luke were part of this. So definitely there's a way for them to do it. Either way, what we're asking is that 1040 to be left there so that way we continue the conversation as some of us are going to be submitting those documents, right? I'm not, I don't want to submit them and then be like, oh, there's no, there's no funding until like God knows when, you know, we go through this process again, you know, okay. so I, go ahead. That's fine. Thank you, Luke. Yeah, um, just a couple of things. A, a pension for like a salary that we're getting is like nothing. You get like $2 a month. Like it's not, there's no, there's also like no, I don't, I guess I don't understand the parameters of this. I'm sure there's a calculation. I'm sure it's like 1% of your salary times your years of SOAR service. Ron, do you have the, do you know what the calculation is offhand for a pension? Luke, how much money are we talking about here? Is it insignificant? And, you know, we'll. Yeah, I just don't know how you, 
I, I don't know how you access. I, I understand. I don't know either, but you know. Yeah, so, I just. Yeah. I think unless okay. you're like, there are a lot of rules for like, if you don't work X amount of time, you're not going to collect anything back. It's just going to be like right. money. So, but I'm fine. You can put it in. I'm not. I'm just, it's not, it's a thousand bucks. Fine. But I think I'd like to know from Ron like the rules because if if there's no way of us collecting, it's just pointless to put in the, the budget. So maybe Ron, you could provide us with kind of what the rules are for us. Yeah, I'll have to how much it come up. And how much money is the budget? It's just a thousand bucks. It's nothing. Oh, come on, give me a break. That's yeah, no, I'm fine. But I, but if it's a thousand bucks, that could go to like some committee and use it. Like, I don't think so. But you cannot speak for the rest of us because this is what happened several years ago when we were even talking about insurance. Some people say they didn't care about it. Other council members said, put it there so whoever needs X or Y to access it. If you choose not to access it, their environment, even if it's a dollar. You choose not to access it. That's your prerogative not to use it. But I would say don't take the ability for other people to use it because it means something to them. And some no, people I, have done it. Some people have done it for their 20 years so they were here. You know? Um, yeah, I, I so get it. So, Selena, my point isn't that it should not be available. My point is that I don't know if it's actually accessible to us, but I'm, you can put it in let, there. Let it go. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so um, Ron Wilson, can you go ahead and... Um, and add it, just take it for contingency. It's only a thousand forty. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll put it back in. Thank you so much. All right, Council. Is there anything else you see here that you guys would would like to discuss about? Look, I see your hand raised. Go ahead. Yeah. The, the other thing I want to say is, um, I think that for Jimmy's proposal, which what might be useful for us is for Ron to tell us how much money we get by moving the lease payments forward to FY twenty three and just divide that figure by the number of staff positions so we could know what the maximum amount of money we could give to staff as a raise would be. So, you know, Jimmy cited like 70,000, uh, you know, a, a $3,000 bonus or something. Um, that would be like, I think like $60,000. That might just be a little bit more than what we have. So, so that everybody understands the money that we have to, to deal with and the the kind of extra money we could just give to everybody, which would affect lower wage employees more than higher wage employees, which I think that that makes a lot of sense in my head. We would just, it would be helpful. I think if Ron just tells us what the maximum amount could be. Okay. I second that. Okay. Thank you. So Ron, um, if you could provide that information so we could make best decisions, that definitely will work. Sure. I can do that. And remember, we could always do a combination of 3% plus a 2% with the other way. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. So um, anything else you guys see in this schedule that you guys have any questions, uh, members of the public, after council, I hear nothing else from council school so far. I know Nina has asked questions, Danielle has asked questions. We have answered both of those questions or comments. Um, anybody else of the community wishes to say something for your name, last name, Create a block number. I know Nina and Danielle, I, I let it go this time, but you should know better. Um, okay, so if there's anybody else that has a question, Council, let me know if you have anything else you need to add to this. One or two, um, if there's any other concerns or questions, I guess, ask for about it. Okay. All right, so I did ask in the chat, Melissa, if she could please, on the next uh, work session, um, add all the items that we have discussed in ARPA so we continue working on that, you know, communication. So that way we could usually, we put them in a work session, we talk them through, and then we decide collectively to move them to a voting. Um, so that way we at least know that they're there and we could have that, that conversation, okay? Uh, Luke, I know you have the spreadsheet for ARPA. Can you also make sure that with the amounts that we have talked, what it will look like for us um, when it comes to um, how much money we have in ARPA and how much money we will be left out, including um, the home improvement on it, including the extra money for the scholarship and everything else that we have talked about moving from here to ARPA, okay? So for the next work session, can you please help us out with that? So that we have a better understanding of how much money we have already allocated, how many money we're working on real working on allocating, right? And how much money we have le left over um, to make decisions of, and also taking to the session the comment that uh, Jared did make 
some of the projects that we do have um, because of inflation, the prices might have gone up. So we need to take into account some of the money that we have allocated for some of those big projects um, in order to make sure that we are covered and not um, waiting for the last bit of money to, to try to make sure we account for inflation on, on the cost of them. Jared, that was more or less what you mentioned, correct? Uh, that is correct. Okay, so Melissa did say that she will add it to the next session, so please be prepared. Um, and please look over the agenda so that we also know like everything was like added to it. Um, Ron, if you could also send it to Melissa as well, so we're all in the same page, because um, you, you are basically your finance consultant, so you definitely need to know where our movements, our next movements when it comes to ARPA, okay? On it, um, it says move and to ARPA, a discussion on it, because it means it's been moved to ARPA approval already, okay? Luke, go ahead. And I would just say that the spreadsheet I circulated after our last budget meeting with the changes we discussed there, most of which are reflected here, it did have the, the total ARPA expenses, including the home repairs, like what we we have available 773,000 now, if we fund everything we've talked about, we would have 338,500 left over. And that's it, that's spreadsheet. Can you just recirculate, do you send it out to Ron and Melissa as well, or just us? Yeah, Ron and Melissa as well. Ron, you should have that. We already have the yep. yep. Okay, perfect. So um, I guess review it and make sure, Melissa, that everything is covered. If we miss something here, because some items were not in the budget, they were just mentioned for ARPA. So we could start the conversation either on all of them or as many as we need to as we go. But at least we'll make sure it has a landing something in the agenda, list each one by the amount. So that way we alert the public of the conversation we're having. And two, we also are fully aware of what it looks like. All right, Melissa? Okay, Mayor. Okay, and Ron, I definitely want to make sure you have that information as well as Kamali because you guys are basically uh, working on the financial end and on, on that end. The other thing to bring up, there's at least one or two proposals uh, when it comes to the um, to the fees um, from code that we need to add to the work session that has been proposed to us by the uh, co-director and the team. Uh, so we also need to have that discussion because the budget, um, the fees for um, the, the fees for the city are part of the budget in order for us to line up everything we need, we need in order to approve the budget. Okay. Um, is there anything else I'm missing regarding um, this? Um, Ron, can you do me a favor? Can you give me the final totals now for the budget? What it looks like when it comes to the new total for what what the budget total is? Um, yeah. So, how how um, deep do you want me to do this? Um, because we're in line item by nine item, if you could please at least give us uh, one, the overall, what was the reduction? Because we did reduce some items and we moved some items around. What does it look like right now? Yeah, so our so our total um, budgeted revenue is thirteen million five hundred and seventy four thousand nine thirty two point seven three, and our total expenses are the same. Okay. Uh, the other thing is like uh, one of the questions that I was asked how can we went from a five to a twelve to a thirteen. The twelve and the thirteen included the grant, correct? Yes. Yes. Can you do me a favor? Can you guys make a note of what it looks like for the money itself and separate the grants if it's not highlighted or put it somewhere else? Thank you so much. Can you also make a note in the bottom because it was very hard for people to like see it and for me to also see it. You know, when I was reading it like virtually. Okay. Will do. Don't Thank you so much because for people it was a big jump to go from like five to thirteen, as listed on on this document, right? So the the top part, right? The top part itself, it does not translate evenly. That that is what our working budget is. The other thing is like remember because of the work of the street, how the street camera works is based on our um, general fund expenses. So we need to make sure that uh, we get ten percent of whatever the general fund expenses is. All right. Okay. All so, right. uh, Council, any questions about any of the line items that we discussed so far? Um, remember, this is just a read through. You're not voting on anything. We're just moving stuff around as we see fit. 
we will have like other work session discussions and other budget readings and, and we're ready to vote, we'll be ready to vote. Okay, so this part is done. Um, if you guys have no further questions, I see nothing on the chat. I did had a I, I did had a question regarding the garden committee. I know originally it was placed to four thousand dollars, but mainly it was done because the city was supposed to provide a fence. Uh, Mr. Kamali, that was provided around your time, correct? Yes. So that's the reason why the garden committee went up so high, but it usually well, is not that high. Go ahead. I reach out to them and Valerie is here as the liaison. I believe that they have the anniversary of community garden. I defer to Valerie because I did email them and ask them what was the reason to go from 2000 to 4000. And uh, I believe, you know, Valerie way in and she told me that they have anniversary and some other costs. So I defer to council member. Valerie here. Uh, Valerie, I'll have you next. The other thing to point out to communities like they are uh, getting $10,000 from a grant that um, Valerie yes. um, led and wrote and also as well the, with some support from our grant writer. So there is $10,000 that they have there. That's the wild surprise of, of the additional $4,000. So it'll be um, $14,000 um, for the line item. And, you know, I, I, I wanted to know what was the reason why they needed the extra money because um, originally it was increased to do the fence and public works to care of the fence. Um, and it was also backed up with some of the funding they were able to to, um, to collect. But, you know, uh, go ahead, Valerie. Um, thank you, yeah. Um, so as the liaison to the garden, uh, the committee for the gar the community garden, um, it's on uh, by the Richardson Park. Um, so that part, that garden is celebrating its 10th anniversary this year um, and is working to make upgrades to the to the garden itself. Um, the $10,000 grant is um, being used to make the uh, garden more ADA accessible. It's helping to repair um, its compost, which was damaged by a tree. Um, and it's also working toward um, creating a better water source for the garden. Unfortunately, in order to get the infrastructure in, to um, create that water source for the garden. I think it's gonna cost a little more than $10,000 on its face. Um, so the community garden is looking to continue to raise funds. Um, you know, their grant, their their operating budget this past year was cut to 2,500. Um, they had pr previously been at 4,000 um, and, you know, they're committed to continuing to looking for more grants um, and funding. But right now, I think if it's possible to keep them at $4,000 in the budget, um, I think that would be helpful to show that we're committed to the community garden, that the community garden is able to grow and to continue to build um, on what it's already done, um, and to make sure that you know in the next year or so that they can have a sustainable water source, so that they don't have to keep flushing water down the street um, when they open the fire hydrant to do that um, to water their garden. So that's really what it's for. Um, you know, I'm open to suggestions, but I think. If we can keep it where it is right now, that would be helpful. So thank you. Um, I would say at least for me, I'll consider at least me, I'll think about the four, but it'll be like only for this year and then it'll go back to like 2000 or whatever 3000 is. Because at a certain point, I also need to figure out what, what they're doing there. When we have asked for information, it's been very hard to receive, right? So um, there's something we definitely need to work on. Um, one of the last purchases they made about two years ago was an electrical, uh, Sir Kamali, was it an electrical lawnmower? What, which one was it? I don't recall that one, Mayor. I have to look into it. Please. And we definitely wanted to make sure that we know where, where it's being stored, where it's at, and you know what's going, what's going on with the things that they need. But also um, I'll look into what the proposals are for the committees and figure out what they propose for them to do for that. I, I'm trying to, in my head, work that each committee at least brings a proposal together with more specifications and more information in order for us to have a better sense of what's happening. Because I'm getting a lot of questions from residents about if we're giving them a chunk, what is specifically are they doing? Some of them are, are more out there, so you definitely see what they're doing. And some of them not as much. And I need to be able to make sure that not just us, but our team is able to answer those questions with a lot more um, with a lot more clarity. 
Go ahead, Valerie, I see your hand. Um, yeah, thank you. I think, I mean, the other thing to keep in mind is the community garden has been used by the Cultural Academy for Excellence over the last couple of years to help um, residents and students in um, apartment buildings learn about community gardening. Um, that was something that was done during the pandemic. And I know that because we were trying to work with them to, you know, expand garden access at the gazebo as well. Um, and so that's just something, it's a, it's a resource. And I think, you know, the community garden committee can certainly do a better job of um, publicizing and, and explaining kind of all the work they're doing, all the potential that they have um, and, and things like that. So I think it's definitely something we can work toward. So thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, because we got an email saying regarding the fees and people were concerned because it sounded like the plots are being used by other people outside the city. So they're wondering what the process looked like and why they were being used by others. So um, I'll send all the questions that are received. Right, um, but it's not just a garden community. I think it's like for for the communities as, as we continue working on, you know, restructuring to be able to better answer the questions and be able to support our not us as just liaisons, but also our staff um, who who's also liaison to the communities and um, and when people are asking, you know, various questions, we know what the information is. All right, that's all I have. Um, anything else you guys need for this portion? Thank you, Melissa. Um, as we move over to item number four. Okay, so I'll move on to item number four, reading of ordinance 05-23, an ordinance establishing the tax rate, adopting an annual budget, appropriating the funds for the fiscal year 2024. Beginning July 1st, 2023, ending July 30, 2024, the mayor and council will have a reading of the ordinance 05-2023. Melissa, can you put it up on screen, please? Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, Jared, I'm going to use your wonderful voice to read this ordinance. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. I'm flattered. Uh, City of Mount Rainier, Ordinance Number 5-2023, introduced by Mayor and City Council. <clears throat> an ordinance establishing the tax rate, adopting an annual budget, and appropriating funds for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2024. Whereas in accordance with section 6-303 of the tax property article of the annotated code of Maryland, by July 5th of every year, the council of the city of Mount Rainier shall set the tax rate for the next fiscal year on all assessments of property subject to municipal corporation property tax. And whereas a public hearing must be held prior to the establishment of municipal corporation tax rate, if the new tax rate will exceed the constant yield tax rate as calculated by the state of Maryland department of assessments and taxation and Whereas the proposed tax rate for fiscal year 2024 will exceed the blended constant yield tax rate of 70, uh, sorry, um, $0.763 or 76.3 cents per $100 of assessed valuation. And whereas pursuant to City of Mount Rainier Ch Charter Section 702-A, sorry, 702.A, the city manager submitted a recommended budget for fiscal year 2024 to the council for its review and consideration. And whereas the budget provides a complete financial plan for fiscal year 2024, it contains estimates of anticipated revenue and proposed expenditures for the upcoming fiscal year. And whereas the city of Mount Rainier charter section 702.B requires the council to conduct a public hearing on the proposed budget prior to adoption of the budget. And whereas after giving public notice, the council held, held a public hearing on the constant yield tax rate and to receive comments on the proposed fiscal year 2024 budget and tax on March 25th, 2023. And whereas after considering the recommended fiscal year 2024 budget submitted by the city manager and the comments that were made at the public hearing on the budget and tax rate, the council adopts the budget and tax rates as set forth in this ordinance. Now, therefore be it ordained by the council of the city of Mount Rainier, Maryland, this day of 2023 as follows. Section one, tax rate dash real property, the tax rate for all single family residential real property subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be $0.75 or 75 cents per hundred dollars of assessed valuation for, fis for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June 3rd, excuse me, sorry, June 3rd, 30th, 2024. The tax rate for all um, townhouse residential real property subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be 75 
uh, $0.75 or 75 cents per um, $100 of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2024. The tax rate for all multifamily residential real property subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be 86, uh, 0.8, 0.86 dollars or um, 86 cents per hundred dollars of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024 beginning July 1st 2023 and ending June 30th 2024. The tax rate for all commercial real property subject to taxation by City of Mount Rainier shall be 0.79 dollars or 79 cents per hundred dollars of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024 beginning July 1st 2023 and ending June 30th 2024. The tax rate for all industrial real property subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be 79 cents per hundred dollars of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024 beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024. Um, the tax rate for all vacant developed real property subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be $2.50 per hundred dollars of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2024. Section two, tax rate dash business personal property. The tax rate for all business personal property tax subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be 0 .99, um, $0 0.99 dollars or 99 cents per hundred dollars of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2024. Uh, tax rate operating property of railroad and public utilities. The tax rate for all operating property of railroad and public utilities subject to taxation by the city of Mount Rainier shall be $2.75 per $100 of assessed valuation for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2024. The, um, sorry, section four general fund revenues, the following adopt, amounts shall be adopted and appropriated as the general fund budget for all revenue for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023 and ending June 30th, 2024. Tax revenue, $6,227,902.79. Licenses and permit, $734,900. Wait, sorry, seven hundred thirty-four thousand nine hundred twelve dollars and fifty cents. Intergovernmental revenue, five hundred forty-one thousand nine hundred fifty-four dollars and forty-four cents. Charges for services, twenty-four thousand five hundred dollars. Fines and forfeitures, eight hundred seventy-nine thousand dollars. Miscellaneous, one hundred twenty thousand dollars. $120,600. Grants, uh, $5,046,063. Total budget revenue, total budget revenue, $13,574,932.73. Section five, general fund expenditures. Darren, you're breaking up again. Check your audio. Okay, can you, can you guys hear me? Yes, not clearly. Okay, sorry. I think it's just my voice cracking. Sorry. <laughs> um, wages, wages and leave pay. I'll try to enunciate clearly. Wages and leave pay, three million three hundred seven thousand two hundred seventy-six dollars and twenty-seven cents. Employee benefits and services, one million eight hundred ninety-six thousand two hundred eighty-three dollars and seven cents. Materials and supplies, $276,200. Repairs and maintenance, $140,000. Professional services, $819,850. Other services and charges, $451,930.39. Community activities, $177,000. Infrastructure and facilities maintenance, $876,750. Capital outlay, capital 
dash capital project, $257,000. Debt service, $326,580. Um, grant expense, $5,046,063. Total budgeted expenditures, $13,574,000. $932.73. Section 6, General Fund Expenditure Categories by Department. The following amounts shall be adopted and appropriated as the general fund budget for all expenditure categories by department for fiscal year 2024, beginning July 1st, 2023, and ending June 30th, 2024. Jared, you're cracking. Hey, Your voice is cracking again. Um, so, uh, do you want me to try to plug in a headset or keep on going? I think when you get close like that, because here you're loud and clear. I think when you move back, yeah. when you start cracking. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean in literally. Uh, city governance, seventy four thousand, hundred sixty dollars. Sorry, Val, are you shaking your head? Is it still bad? You said city governance and it worked and then you started reading the numbers and it stopped working. So basically she gave you the thumbs up and then it went down the hill. One, one sec. All right, how about this? Uh, Luke, since you're next in the rotation, you wanna go ahead while Jerry finds the, his mic? Yep. Go ahead. Um, so we entered, Jared's gotta mute his mic. Jared, mute your mic. All right, City Hall, $5,504,483.99. Administrative Services Department, $686,794. Code Compliance Department, $450,246. Economic Development Department, $354,668. Police Department, $3,778,626. Public Works Department, $2,342,726. Debt services, 326580 and contingency, 56646 For total budgeted department expenditures of $13,574,932.73. All uh, full-time empo- employees for each department in City Hall for FY24 will be three, admin services, five, code compliance is four, economic development, one, police department, 23, public works, 10, and total budgeted FTEs of 46 in FY24. Just a pause. It's staying the same uh, so far for right now. Okay, go on. And that's it. Okay, so you guys heard our first reading. There's certain things that will change here as the budget goes on. What are they? Was the contingency is a thousand forty less? And I'm not sure what else we took out of contingency. I think the other money is going to be taking care of that. But. Say that you have heard the first reading of the ordinance 05-2023. We do have a question on the chat from the Neil Carter, 200 block of Shepherd. Is this cyber going to continue beyond this year? And if so, how does the council propose to pay for a difference next year, assuming there'll be no ARPA money next year to shift line items to in order to make room for it? Um, I think I briefly spent it. So the way the the budget, the, the tax break basically works is the tax rate. It's once you establish and we pass, it stays on until we make a change, until you increase it or decrease it. So once we, uh, the next is going to be, se- the new one is going to be 75 once we vote on it. So let's say next year we decide to leave it alone, not touch it, it'll say 75 ongoing. If we, let's say we decide to increase it to whatever X amount, that'll be the new tax rate for that upcoming year and for years to come. That's the reason why my answer was yes and no. But at the minimum, from July 1st, 2023, until June June 30, 2024, that'll be the, the tax rate, unless we do something to change it. Um, I hope that clarifies a little bit, Daniel. As for your second question, um, how does council propose to pay for a different tax next year? So I mean, there'll be no ARPA money next year to shift like I think. I think that's gonna be a bigger discussion, Danielle, because you are right. We were able to um shift a couple of things out uh from here to ARPA. And as you heard, our ARPA funding is gonna be reduced as we reallocated stuff. 
Um, once we relocate, we have until 2026 to pay the last bill from ARPA, more or less, once they are located. Um, but the percent is also weighted on the yield. And depending what the yield is, that's a seven, the 0.75% for 100 square foot asset of a set value, more or less. Um, regarding the conversation, yeah, that's something that we need to have a discussion of. Basically, we're going to have to go through the budget next year or through the year and figure out, one, if anything is costing more or less, right? And number two, you basically revisit the budget every year to make sure that um, you, you know where to put the money. And that's the reason why some years we have to have cut um, items um, or reduce them. Uh, mainly because, um, mainly because, um, you know, there's only so much we could like stretch in the budget and we need to make sure we also save some money for our resource, our rainy day. All right. So that's my short explanation of that. Uh, Luke, is there something specifically you need to have regarding the ordinance or what is it, a, what is it that you want to talk about? Yeah. I just want to address those questions and give a little bit more of an answer okay. there. So I was asked you to just hold. First, I'm going to ask the council, do they have anything regarding the ordinance we just read? And then we could address the question, okay? Um, you're good with the with the ordinance, Luke, so far? Yep. Good with the first reading? Valerie, good with the first reading? Jared, good? Yes, I am. Oh, loud and clear, Jared. Jimmy, yeah, you're good? <laughs> sorry. Okay. All right, so for the record, we did the first reading. Thank you, Jared um, and Luke at the end for stepping in. Now you know what I go through. I will be rotating the reading, so be ready for the next round. Um, so that part is done. Uh, Luca, go ahead and see the floor. There's something else you need to um, you need to add. Yeah, I would just say, Danielle, um, when we made decisions on well, a couple of things. One, when we made made decisions to move expenditures to ARPA during our budget hearing discussion, we made sure those were one-time expenses. In other words. We asked finance and the department heads whether these were expenses we were going to see on the budget in every year or whether this is just a one-time expense and we needed to do this, why not pull from ARPA? So we had a conscious decision about which expenses we moved to ARPA and they were only one-time expenses so that we wouldn't have to worry about um, in future years where are we going to find that money. The other thing is that related to ARPA, expenditures that we've already allocated they are sort of like dream things that we never really have money to do, or we have to always find grant money to do. So our stormwater management product projects that are taking up a lot of this, um, Potts Hall, um, our food security efforts that we did that, that Mayor Benitez did all over the city, um, our rent con our, our rent assistance, stuff that like we normally don't put in the budget and we had the money to do, we did. We don't expect those items to come into the budget. Potts Hall will find money for, streets and sidewalks will find money for. We have that money in the budget and we have more room there. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think we're in a, the city, we put ourselves in a really good space such that we don't have ARPA um, impacting our budget down the line. Thanks. Thank you so much. And um, well, Daniel, you're the only candidate for War One, right? So you're going to be sitting on this side, making those decisions um, if everything works as smooth after May 1st. So thank you for joining us and enduring this pain with us. I think we all have been on the other side as well. Okay. Um, I, I understand. That's what I said, if, when, or can, but you're usually pretty active as well. So thank you for that. All right. So this is the first reading. Um, it's going to be read again. Uh, more likely more towards the end because some of those numbers would, will shift depending on what we want to, if we want to cut anything else. Um, what uh, Ron would do is like, you remember how we remove 1,040 for contingency, so that number will be updated. Ron, can you make sure when the ordinance is there, you also highlight on the side what has uh, what has been updated so we are aware of what it is, so that way yes. the public also is aware of what it looks like, okay? Yes. All right, thank you so much. All right, seeing that there's no other questions or comments on this item, can we go ahead and move to the next item? All right, so this will be the second reading um, and adoption ordinance all uh, four dash twenty twenty three amending ordinance ten twenty two to defer effective date that to the to the first effective day of the rent civilization ordinance um, therefore until January first twenty twenty four and declaring that council's intent to be bound by the terms of the Prince George's County C D L seven twenty three December thirty first. So the council will have the second readoption of the ordinance 
Melissa, can you make sure you put rent stabilization on, on the on the wording so make sure it's a little bit more clear what we're talking about the agenda itself? Okay. Okay, ma'am. So that's something I'll go at. Um can you um can you guys can you go to the ordinance itself? Okay, so you guys have it here. We did have our first read on April 4th, 2023. Um, this will be, um, it says emergency ordinance 04 2023. This will be the second reading and it's up for a vote tonight. Um, and so we could vote on it. Um, so basically, to give you a summary of what it looks like, it's um, so the Prince George's County has CB 07 2023, which is an emergency rent civilization ordinance that will take effect April 17th. The city, the city currently has a rent civilization um, that was passed, right? So what we have decided uh, to do is uh, defer until uh, next year, there is 2024, in order to fall under the Prince George's County emergency emergency um, rent stabilization. That's basically what it is. In the meantime, we'll get everything else we need. We will, um, our team has already prepared a letter that will go out once it's approved to the landowners to let them know, landlords to let them know what we're gonna be falling into the Prince George's County CB07 2023, okay? Um, so the, the effective day will be April 17th and um, that will defer to January uh, 2024, okay? That's where we are, where we're at with. So we had a full read through. How long is this document, uh, Melissa? Okay. All right. So those are basically the these are basically the highlights of, of it. Um, we'll be having a second reading. So therefore, um, we will follow the emergency um, number called CB. That's like Council Bill 007-2023, the emergency rent stabilization. So ours is not disappearing. We're putting it on pause as we fall under the emergency one. And in January, we'll go ahead and activate it and we'll be able to gather more information and send out everything else we need to send out. All right, Council, um, I'm going to open up this for um, discussion. Um, and let me know if there's anything else you need to add. I'm going to go uh, War One, Jimmy, Luke, uh, Valley, Jared. I don't have anything to add. Thank you, Jimmy. Uh, Luke. Uh, no, I think this all makes sense given what the county's done uh, and give us some time to get staff up to speed. Thanks. Thank you so much. Valerie, uh, Jarrett? I'm good. Thank you. Jarrett? No additional, no additional comments. Thank you. Thank you. And if you guys hear no additional comments, it's mainly because we have, um, we talked about the rental decision forever in a day and we also talked about the emergency one previously. So this is more like a, you know, formality to make sure we got it. All right, guys, so can I have um, a motion on the floor to, uh, can you bring it down, Melissa, to approve the emergency ordinance uh, 10, oh, sorry, emergency ordinance 04-2023. Okay. I make the motion to approve it. Any second? Second. Seconded. It's been probably moved in second. Any additional discussion? Um, I. I will tell you one thing related to this, mainly that the county council will be having a meeting, I believe it's next week, regarding some of the um, problems they were seen. So um, when it comes to um, landlords increasing heavily rent above the 3%, uh, but also um, talking about senior citizen housing that, um, to, that they're aware that it, it also qualifies or should qualify under rent civilization. So the city will put that information now. This is uh, the county council will be hearing um, this information. So you guys are welcome to you know send us the information. I'll put it together and send it to the county council. So that way they have any information. We did receive an email from a resident and we're, we are following up uh, with it. So that's my only discussion item. Um, any abstention? Objections? I think you guys wanted to do a, a verbal vote. So, Jimmy? What are you asking? Roll call? Yes. Yes. Uh, Luke? Yes. Jared? 
Aye. Valerie? Aye. All right, so this emergency ordinance 04 23 passes unanimously. Okay, so Melissa immediately um, immediately put a no, um, this ordinance out the door tomorrow so that we could be able to fulfill that information out. And council, okay, you guys make sure you stop by this week and sign this document as well, okay? I'll, I'll be there. Then. I'll be there to sign. That's here. <laughs> All when right, Melissa, when, when Melissa, Melissa yeah. texts us about when it's ready. Is this ready to go, Melissa, tomorrow for sign? Yes, but I'll send you an email when, when it's ready, when I finish printing it out. Thank you. Thank you, Melissa. All right. Next item on the agenda. Melissa, I know you want to hold us captive, but you really want to go. All right, Melissa, can you put the last, the, the um, guys, item number six, adjournment? Um, there's one item I definitely want to make sure to tell the public before we go adjourning. Sorry for this moment of privilege. On this Saturday, April 15th, there's going to be a food distribution at uh, Thomas Stone being hosted in collaboration with the police department, the city of Mount Rainier, being hosted by our center, Malka Magazine, our delegate, Dana Fennell, and our delegate, um, Julian Ivey. Um, so the flyers are all out, but it's going to be a food um, distribution that will be um, this Saturday. Melissa, do you know what time at the top of your head? I think it's from 11. Yes, 11. Okay. 11. 11 o'clock. So um, if anybody would like to volunteer, so if we have any youngsters or any people in, in the community that would like to volunteer to help put some stuff together or give out food, um, come out around 10, you know, um, in order for us to be there to help. Uh, that would be great and wonderful. And big thank you to our representatives. Um, Basically, every year they do a night out where they invite various members of the community to a, you know, a buffet eating and stuff. I know, Jimmy, you were part of that collective as well at one point. Um, so this year they decided to do every month a different city. They've gone to Conrad Manor. They're coming here. They're going to go to Brentwood or Brentwood and so on. But uh, this month is the city of Mount Rainier. So they started giving uh, food directly to the community as, as a way for them to celebrate and get close to the community that the need for food is still there. All right. So, can I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Is your probably move a second? Any discussion? Objections? Abstention? Um, hearing none. Um, this meeting has been adjourned, and I guess we'll see you guys for our next work session meeting with plenty of great information. All right, 11 to 2 p.m. is the time. Um, thank you guys so much, and take care. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Steph. Bye.